Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Del Cifa with, Cit with Cities of Hope Ministry. And uh, it's another program of a greater understanding. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, those of you that uh, are helping us out so that we can become live on YouTube, uh, we need you to subscribe to our program. And that subscription is our YouTube channel, which is A Greater understanding, and then Genesee, G-E-N-E-S-E. -E. And uh, today we've got, uh, for our second time, uh, Bill Ding. He is the Flushing Township trustee here in Michigan. And uh, you say, well, why are we sending this to the world? Well, there's a lot of you out there in other um, townships that have the same problem as we're having here in Michigan. And uh, it just might be something to spark up your knowledge of what you might need to do. So stay tuned and you'll find out our program is going to be on what does it, this mean to us, the local voice in government. <laughs> Yes, and thank you for tuning in to another program of a greater understanding here on All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church. And uh, we certainly do appreciate uh, your support, both uh, financially and also by being here on our program live and looking at this program after it has been archived on YouTube. Um, today we have William Bill Bain here. He is a trustee with Flushing Township here in Michigan. And Bill, thank you very much for coming back again. Oh, thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Um, got a question. What does it mean to be a trustee? What do you do? You govern and you listen to the needs of the people of your local <coughs> local municipality. And you uh, try to listen to the concerns and to govern over what needs to be done to make life better for our citizens. Right, right. And you talk to the local people. Oh, absolutely. Um, They're our boss. They're our boss. That's right. Okay. And it's important. Um, we, we're supposed to have a representative government. That's right. Aren't we? And here, if we go, um, what is the definition of a representative government? It's right here. A representative government is the type of government comprised of politicians who represent certain individuals or groups. Uh, it most In most cases, these representatives are voted for by the citizens through the democratic process. That's right. So therefore, if they're voted by the citizens to be there in Lansing or other capitals in other states, um, shouldn't they have a voice for them? Right. Okay. And what would happened a while back? Well, when I was here before, I I'd spoken to you and we were trying to get making calls to the representatives in the house, state house and the state uh, Senate to vote against, uh, it was the, uh, House Bill 5123, and there were hundreds of people that protested this and hundreds of calls they received, and in the dead of night, they passed it anyway. In the dead of night. The dead of night. It was a power play. Yes. By the politicians that are supposed to be representing the local people. Right. Against what the local people wanted. That's right. Wow. So now we're trying to change that. Uh, we I understand we're looking for signatures by may 29th is it right okay and we started back in february right obtaining signatures um we have to have 359 58,000 signatures that's right uh actually 357 999 because i just signed the petition for you, oh, okay. <laughs> you. but uh no and i believe in local representation oh, absolutely um you know without without local representation we're being dictated to by the elites that's right you know um and and that's a shame that's a shame it's against 
what need to be. Now, some of you say, well, why are we talking about politics on a uh, program that has to do with faith? Well, let me tell you, if you go to Isaiah, I just want to read something to you. And and Isaiah and Isaiah is mentioning this five or six hundred years before Jesus entered the scene here in the flesh. And it says in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the government shall rest on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, his government, and his government, um, and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice and henceforth for ever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And that's none other than Jesus Christ. And our government here in the United States of America, and again, United States, doesn't mean the federal government controls the United States of America, is based on representative government, based on what the people want, and is based biblically uh, on the morality and also on the justice and everything is based on the Bible. But we've been taking that out of government, and that's what's been happening. And if any of you uh, have a question what we're talking about, you can just call it at the number that you see on the screen. And uh, we're going live, okay, right now from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday right here on YouTube. So um, on Facebook and other um, social medias. So we need signatures. Right. We need signatures. And this is probably not just us here in Michigan. Other states and capitals of those states and representatives are probably doing the same thing, aren't they? Well, I'm not sure what's going on around the country, but uh, it's unfortunate that these uh, power grabs are happening and to take away the representative government. Michigan's really got a problem right now. Yes. And uh, we, we need to remember that in November. Well, Michigan, to a lot of the United States, is like a pilot place where they use what they do for or against us, and then they uh, adapt it to the other other states in the union. Well, they're trying to make Michigan California is what they're trying to do, and uh, the citizens are not going to stand for it. We've had so many regular people say, "Hey, give me some petitions. We want to get involved in this." Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is a nonpartisan issue. I mean, uh, if you look at those stats, I mean, it's in the high 80s of people who oppose what they've done, mm -hmm. and uh, we we need to be able to. Uh, fight these things and to actually have the voice. Your voice is so important. You know, when you do uh, elect your local officials, you're, you're exercising your free speech, your uh, First Amendment rights also. And when you silence the people, you're silencing their voice. And when you take away representative government, that's what you're doing. Yeah, and you know, with the constituents that have big money mm -hmm. in Lansing, mm -hmm. um, what happens is they bypass the people. You know, there's a lot of you out there, we call the millennials, okay? They were born after 2000. And some of you are involved in government, and some of you are not, but many of you are not. And you are the driving force of what's happening in the government. You know, if, if you allow your voice to end, uh, that's actually what they want. I think God is calling upon uh, a generation of Davids and Esthers. Okay, David's and Esther's. And Esther's. David, what, knocked over Goliath. Right. And then through doing that, he became anointed as king right. of Israel. And Esther did what? <coughs> Saved her nation. Saved her nation. And, uh, you know, the story of those of you that understand the Bible, Esther actually, with Naomi, mm -hmm. um, she did not leave her mother-in-law after her husband and his brother and her and Naomi's father, uh, husband died. <clears throat> she actually made a covenant with God. She says, your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. And she made a covenant with the creator of the universe by mentioning that 
to Naomi. So it's important that we become David's and Esther's. Well, and you know what happened for years. And I mean, uh, elected officials back in the day, there were a lot that uh, were very good people. And, you know, uh, regular citizens, she's think, well, we've elected, then they're going to take care of things for us. Mm -hmm. But now you've got to be the watchkeeper to make sure that things are being done right. And a lot of these things are slid through. And then when people, the voters find out, it's like, how did this happen? We need to be the government. We are the government. We are the government. And we it does not end when you cast that vote. Make sure they're doing the right thing. That's right. You don't just give let their will be your will, That's whatever right. they decide. And it's important. You know, other governments on this planet, the same thing happens with their the government. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens is, is let's say they go in and they don't have money. They're very modest. And all of a sudden they have palaces, they have chauffeurs, they sit at the best seats in the restaurants. These are our politicians. Mm -hmm. Where does all that money come from? Well, <laughs> it's just like with what the state did here. They, they took it from uh, local representative government, the duly elected officers. And that when the state did this power grab, they put it at the Public Service Commission, which those are a three panel appointed, a lot of lobbyists from the energy industries in this. Mm -hmm. They're appointed, they're not elected. So you don't pull away the authority from the local government, which the citizens elect. Wow. You know? So these are appointed. Yeah, they're appointed. Three people decide what's going to happen in every community in Michigan. Rather than the people. The people. Wow, that's dangerous. Right. And, and this is a Pandora's box because if they do this, they get away with this, which we're going to fight two to the nail no matter what we have to do here. Uh, if we get the signatures or not, it's, in my opinion, this is unconstitutional. There will be litigation. They went ahead and they made a power grab at night. Mm -hmm. after telling you that they weren't going to vote on it mm -hmm. until everybody left. That's right. And then they made a decision. That's right. Wow. They should not have their positions. No. And and people should go ahead and they should Google uh, HR 5123 and, and the public act uh, and just see how they voted. And then uh, if they voted for this, come November, they should be voted out of office. Well, shouldn't shouldn't they jam their phones we did we tried and uh it was on deaf ears there were hundreds of people that called and there were hundreds of people that showed up at lansing and uh every single one of them voted at least on the one party side mm -hmm. voted for it it was along party lines and there used to be a time when you had moderates in both the republican and the democratic party mm -hmm. and that's when things really we we got good laws and uh, but now you've got this great divide and unfortunately there's personal political agendas and uh, they're not doing it for the people. They're not doing it for the people. No, they're not doing it for the people. So we should do more of like on a great understanding of you coming and talking and discussing that the people have a choice. They do have a choice. And they're the ones electing these politicians that are supposed to be representing them and not their self and special interest groups. Exactly, special interest groups. Now, there's a few few uh, things happening all over the state for yeah. these signatures. Yeah. Uh, you said something about the Speedway. What is it? The owner of uh, both Birch Run and the Owasso Speedway uh, have graciously allowed us to have signing events for all the races. Uh, the one's coming up uh, the Saturday, May 18th. May 18th. And where is that located? That's an Ovid. The address? It's Ovid. It's uh, 7204 West M21 in Ovid, Michigan, just outside of Owasso. Okay. And uh, we will have a table set up there and volunteers. And they've got both on Saturday and Sunday. These are big race events. Wow. And uh, if people like to come and sign... Uh, we would sure love to have you got a couple Saturdays. Yeah. And then we have the last one there prior to our deadline, which is on the 25th of uh, May. And the 29th, we have to have all the right. signatures and, and tabulated. We're, what we're shooting for is uh, to have them in by the either the 27th, 28th, you know, somewhere around there. Now, you have a Facebook page. We do. It's called uh, Genesee County Citizens for Local Choice. Local Choice. That has all our events on it. 
if people like to get involved, either sign or volunteer, they could just go there and right there, yeah, and sign right online. Well, they, they, you have to sign the uh, petition in, in in real life, but they could sign up to volunteer to volunteer, right? So that they can obtain signatures, right? Okay, and you've got the troops out there. Oh yes, we I do. know that. That's good. That's got good. a lot of people, and I, I really thank the volunteers and the true Americans and patriots who love this country, and are fighting for their rights. And that's what they're doing. I mean, I've spoken to so many people, and it's Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and they're upset with this, but they just can't also, believe. Also, it. it's 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 not any one political group that doesn't want this, right? But you've got certain political people in Lansing. Mm -hmm. And again, they've got their own agenda. And, you know, when it comes down to the, the solar and the wind and all this, you know, it's not like we're against alternate energy because we need it all. We need the natural gas. We need to have a very strong power grid. It's a matter of national security. But when you're just going ahead and you're putting all these incentives for these solar companies, which does not help you or me, it doesn't help you to get the yeah. solar panels. Uh, to, for your home or does not help you to get that uh, those windmills to generate energy. And the, and the truth be told is when I believe it was the governor uh, took away where if you have excess energy when you're creating these things, power company gets to keep it. You don't get a credit. On, you don't get a credit. No, you don't. You used to be they would basically pay you. you know? So if I have solar panels on my and, home. And you overproduce. That goes. They, they to get the to keep it. That's something they did a few years ago. So, I mean, if they were on our side, be on our side, you know, say what you mean, mean what you say. But this is just basically a lot of people are profiting from this and it's not helping the regular people. It's a power grab. If they want to put a transmission line to a hundred through a acreage of a hundred year old farm, they can do it. They can take away uh, the livelihood of people because intimate domain is not just to the government. Utilities can do it. Okay. So you, we've got to realize how impactful and how dangerous this, this whole thing is. And uh, we need to send a, a real wake-up call in November. They need to be voted out. They absolutely need to be voted out. Bill, I thought eminent domain was just for the government. No. To utility companies can do utility this. Utility companies have eminent domain. Yes. Wow. I mean, when they cut up the state, uh, these conglomerate utility companies, uh, they gave them a lot of power. Right. A lot of power. And uh, they determine the gas and electricity right. that we have in certain districts. Right. Uh, can you imagine if that was gone? Right. Wow. That's why uh, your local representative government is there to stand for you, to fight for you, to speak okay. up for you, and to pass ordinance to protect the citizens. Okay, so we can actually go online and find out who voted on this HR uh, 5123. Right, and it, the, when they, by the time the Senate got done with it, it was a public act, and it's on here. Let's see if things on. Public act. Um, Mark this down. Yes, it's PA 235. Public Act 235. Yes, that's what they did in November of 2023. That's it's supposed to be a public act. Yeah. Not that's what they call it. Not, not a politician act. Not a politician act. Well, so. yeah, it's important. So there's, there's activities happening all over. Can they get a hold of you somehow by email? Yes. Okay, uh, what is your email address? It's uh, Mark this down, everyone. William D. Bain at gmail.com. William D. Bain at gmail.com. All small. All, all lowercase. Yeah. And uh, they can find out how they can help. Right. Absolutely. You know, because that's what this is all about. Right. Helping to get our local representation, local governments, rather than just the state making decisions over the people. Right. Uh, regardless of that. And that has nothing to do, I mean, you know, this this November, um, whoever voted on this can be voted out of office. Right. And I would encourage regular people, you know, soccer moms, uh, uh, anyone that really cherishes our way of life. We need these folks to go ahead. And it's not that hard to be an elected official. 
And if you got the heart to go ahead and do it, you can make a difference in this world. You can make a difference in our country. And I would encourage even folks in the church. It's like we are the government. We are and, the government. And just like you said, the government's on his shoulders. That's right. The ecclesia. That's, that's right. We need to do that. So we need to take and, and take that responsibility. There were a lot of folks that did not want when when David stepped up to Goliath. So look at all those soldiers in our army. They didn't want to go ahead and, and do it, but it took a boy. Yeah. And, and Goliath was intimidating the people. Right. And uh, he didn't just sit back. He ran towards Goliath. That's to right. Him down. That's right. And uh, with, I guess, he took five smooth stones yes. from the brook Chenoweth. Yes. Was it because he was a bad shot? No, it's because Goliath had four other brothers. Uh, <laughs> so he went to take them all out. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Goliath fell. Yes. And uh, I think we get the term, uh, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Mm -hmm. Because Goliath died by his own sword. Mm -hmm. And that was the sword of David after that. Mm -hmm. You know, David had an armor bearer that carried that sword in his battles. So uh, it's important to, to, to get involved in government. Yes. It's very important. Uh, you know, it's not just for uh, a certain group of people, but right. it's for all of us. Even school board. I mean, we need to, our, our children are under attack. I mean, you know, it used to be you'd go to school for the basics of math and English and these things. And they're putting so much confusion and, and just evil onto these kids yeah, the three and, R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Right, right. Let the children be children and leave them alone. Yeah. You know, there was a time if there was somebody lurking around the playground, it didn't matter if you were a Democrat, independent, or Republican, you'd stand up for that kid and go leave them alone. Yeah. And I, I, it is just disturbing those folks that are in there, what they're trying to do. I, I lived in a couple of small communities, uh, Goodrich, Fenton, mm -hmm. and Davison. And uh, we had grocery stores, Seifer Brothers. And my father and uncle would actually raise the community. I mean, you know, the raise first, second, third, and fourth generation mm -hmm. of their fathers, fathers and fathers right on down the line. But they cared about people. That's right. They cared about people. Right now, um, it's not that we don't have a voice. We do. Right. We do have a voice. And that's that vote. That's right. That vote is, is our voice. And if you think that the sanctity vote is over, it's not. I, this November, you're going to find out some really strict rules that are going to be put into place. I just want to say one thing, too, is, mm -hmm. you know, the media is not the media that our grandparents knew. It's not the media that our parents knew. The media has been bought up by five or six uh, billionaires, basically. They, mm -hmm. they own everything. So almost everything you hear and see is scripted. It is not uh, investigative journalist, and they are uh, restricted on what they can say. It has to be what's coming down from the top. I heard that they, they send them, like you said, a script, mm -hmm. and all of them say the same thing. It does. Other than a greater understanding. <laughs> it doesn't say the same thing. And, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of falsehoods, lies, and if you only report this much of that much truth, then uh, you're not giving people their true story. No, no. The media of days gone by that we grew up with were actually honest medias. Like you said, they were what? Uh, investigative reporting, not just what they were told to say but actually out there looking for what the truth was so that we can make a judgment, personal judgment. In a lot of these uh, big media, they have foreign interests. And Benjamin Franklin said the importance of independent press. And, and uh, we've been attacked from all these things for years. This thing, these things have been coming on for years where they've slowly got their people in, you know, and in judgeships and everything. And, you know, it is warfare, the things that they're they're doing. You know, it, it's just ridiculous. It's absurd. And it's a distraction. They try to distract the people from seeing what's really going on. Yeah. And, and actually, us as citizens are actually the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they try to hurt us and, and use the benefit that they can get from us, uh, just like a big country called 
China. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a billion, 300 million people. And the group at the top control from cradle to the grave, all those individuals. That's a tremendous amount of power mm -hmm. on the globe. And they're using that power. Um, so in order to get involved, they can get a hold of you. Right. Okay. And uh, that would be at William D. Bain at gmail.com. Right. Okay. And uh, they can just basically say, what, what can I do? Right. Or they can go on our Facebook page and they can contact us through that. Which that, is? Uh, Genesee County Citizens for Local Choice. Genesee County Citizens for Local Choice. And it has all the, the various uh, signing opportunities to volunteer for. Good. So that's it's a very good resource. It's a good resource. And not just for this, but any future events that happen because you're a trustee. Well, yeah, I'm a trustee, but I'm also, since I saw you last yeah. time, I was appointed captain of the Genesee County Citizens for Local Choice. So, so you're a captain. I'm the captain, and I have a co captain. She's been really helpful, Rosalind. And we've also worked with uh, the Shiawassee County uh, captain in uh, Lisa Susky Adams out there. And, you know, we put our volunteers together and we've really been very coordinated on these, these uh, opera. It's actually been fun. Yeah. It's been fun, but there's so much at stake. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I wish we could have fun and have a picnic where everybody just, hey, we're, we're all good Americans, and but we have a battle to fight here. Yeah, and this is a ballot initiative to restore the local voices. Right. And this will go ahead and put the zoning back to where it was with representative government. And uh, so the people have a voice. So a lot of these things can be changed. They can be changed. By changing our representatives in land. That is absolutely important. Yeah. People need to do their homework and uh, they need to look those up. And, and every representative that voted for this monstrosity, this power grab, they need to go. Yeah, I don't care uh, if they say, well, you know, we voted these other things. No, they voted to take away the rights of the people. The people need to take away their job and just say, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Yeah. And and put somebody there that will listen to the right. people. A lot of these politicians have local offices. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they will need their local offices with this. What's happened? No, we, we need to, again, empower the people and uh, to go ahead and, and, and truly have their voice heard. I mean, it, it's like, that's what we're, we're, we're established for. Yeah. We, the people. We, the people. Not we, the profiteering politicians. Or special interest groups. Special interest groups. Yeah, because, and, and you know, the problem with the people getting involved, do you know that across the United States, there is right now credit card debt of mm -hmm. $1 trillion, mm -hmm. and that is bondage. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're burning up their credit cards is because of the inflation that's, true. that's happening and that people are living on their credit cards. Um, and that being the case, you know, the credit card interest is somewhere between 20 to 29%. Now, if you take a trillion dollars at 20 to 29%, very seldom you're going to pay any of the principal off. Mm -hmm. And that's for many years, they're going to be in control because what happens is when we're debt ridden, we can't, we don't have, we have to be working in order to service the debt that we have on our car, on our mortgage, on right. credit cards, uh, and don't have time to go ahead and see what's happening. But there's certain people that can get involved on a local level. That's, that's right. What, and uh, let's 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 do something with this. Let's uh, make it happen before we lose our right, our voice. And even more, we don't want to lose our country. No. Uh, the American dream is live and well. You know, everything that you see out there, everything that's built uh, was all because of the American dream. That's right. And, um, you, you, you know, the American dream is, is something that, well... Uh, we used to have borders, but uh, we're one of the few countries in the world that have a border from letting people come in rather than leave. A lot of the countries that are listening to this, um, they have borders. They, they don't want you to leave, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're, they're working, controlling you. And that's why um, everybody loves what we have. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves what we have. And it's something that you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose. Um, so what else can you suggest as far as besides the signatures 
What else can you suggest? How can we get involved in? Well, again, it gets back to like even uh, I believe school board elections, you know, I, I mean, I think those might even still be coming up. I'm not sure on that. OK, uh, you can become a delegate for uh, well, whatever party you like to be in. But yeah, the one has gone off the rails and uh, we, we need to have people if they're a delegate, they're a voice to the party. OK, I mean, for years. And I mean, there there's I, I worked for, I was with the Democratic Party for years. And I always believed that we could go ahead and change things from the inside out until it went off the rails. I just saw there was no hope. There was no hope of changing it. And uh, that's why I became a Republican. I'd ran yeah. as an independent. And, uh, you know, it, it, it matters what you do and how you go ahead and govern and, and the things you support. You know, uh, a lot of union folk are, are coming to the Republican Party and they're voting, they, you know, they'll split their ticket. In, and if they, even if they split their ticket to go ahead and elect good, good representatives, right. that's what matters. You know, we need to have people that got to have our backs, not just by uh, lip service, but actually have our backs. Mm -hmm. and, and you see what they really do. And, you, and the Bible says you'll know them by their fruits. By their fruit. If you were to look at some of the other legislation that some of these same folks have passed, yeah, it does not help the average people. And I mean, it's big wastes of money. And uh, when you look at the grocery store and you see everybody just so heavy and how am I going to feed my family, they shouldn't be wasting money in Lansing on all these ridiculous things they're doing. And they've got an agenda and we need to put an end to it. That's it. The agenda should be for us, it we should, the people, that should and be. not their own selfish interests. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So um, we should all get involved out there. Uh, you should find out who your representatives are right? and find out how they're voting. It's very easy. Just go to your smartphone, <laughs> you know, and the computer and, and, and you can, you can find out what bills are out there that they're looking at, at passing and, and what the decisions uh, of the people that are doing that. So what have you got here? Well, this is actually what I drafted because I felt so, uh, strongly about this is after they'd voted against the citizens, I uh, made a prepared statement that I entered on the record at Flushing Township. I mean, do you mind if I read this? Could you please? Okay. Get your pens and paper out and write this down. And this is how they violate our constitution, in my opinion. This is, it, it, st it states a prepared statement by Flushing Township trustee Bill Bain regarding the passage of House Bill HR 21, uh, 5123, November 9th, 2023. <clears throat> I hold to the opinion that the above mentioned state legislation is unconstitutional. It undermines local representative government. It silences the voices of the residents and violates their First Amendment rights. The United States is a constitutional republic. We, the people, elect our local representative government. These duly elected officials are who we go to to voice our local concerns, which affect the citizens of our community. Mm -hmm. The passage of House Bill 5123 violates the right of the people to self-govern. It subverts the vote of the people and takes away their right to local representation. It strips away the people's right to have local issues decided by their local duly elected representatives. The backdoor attempt by the state of Michigan undermines the Constitution of the United States of America, taking away local elected authority by giving the authority to an unelected state board or regulatory unit. This subverts the will of the people's vote. Mm -hmm. The people's right to duly elect representative government is recognized in Article 1 of the United States Constitution. Okay. Further, the state's actions violate the implied premise of separation of powers as found in the footnotes of James Madison, which are the very reasons of separation of powers included in the Constitution as stated below. Separation of powers excerpts from footnotes of James Madison, number one, the Federalist, number 48, James Madison, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, whether one or few or many, or whether hereditary or self-appointed, 
uh, or elective may justly be pronounced very definite definition of tyranny. Tyranny. Uh, yes. The Federalist number 51, James Madison. But the great security grants, the gradual concentration of several powers in the same department consists in giving to those the administrator of each department the necessary cons constitutional means and personal motives to resist encroachments of others. The provision for the defense is a must in this, as all cases must be made commencement. Yeah, made commencement to the danger of the attack. Ambition must be made to counteract ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, number 48, James Madison, the conclusion which I am warranted in drawing from these observations is, the demarcation or parchment of these constitutional limits of several departments is not sufficient. Guard against those encroachments which lead to a tyrannical concentration of powers of government in the same hands. Mm. That's what they did. Fewer hands. Yep. Yes. Because of the implied intent of the separation of powers, the umbrella of these protections should apply to state government encroaching upon duly elected government. Furthermore, under equal protection clause of the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, in my opinion, the residents of the community should have the same rights to fight tyranny and the consolidation of power as outlined in James Madison's footnotes. Those truths and protections should carry through regarding state government outreach, overreach as well. In conclusion, in my opinion, as elected officials of Flushing Township, we should explore the possibility of filing lawsuits against the state of Michigan for this unconstitutional legislation, whether as individual township and or collectively through the Michigan Township Association or other townships, villages, and cities respectfully submitted Bill Bain Flushing Township Trust. So if we don't obtain the proper signatures, we need we can to still organize and what does it say here? File suit. File a lawsuit. Yes. And I think there's a lot of constitutional grounds to do this. And I mean, our forefathers, if you look at the, the strength and power and what they wrote, you know, there was a reason they put the separation of powers and you cannot have things consolidated. No. You have tyranny. You have a you have communism is what you have. Communism. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's it. it I, I've read that in the Federalist Papers. I've read the book, the Federalist Papers. I, I was trying to read that one. My cord my cord got over the... the uh, yeah. so thank you for the help there. Yeah, James <laughs> Madison was the author of the Constitution. Yes. You know, he was he was like the... Uh, how would you say? He, he wrote notes about what was happening, who was talking to who and, and what. But uh, no, he was... Uh, matter of fact, I, I attended James Madison College. It was named really? after him oh. at Michigan State University, which is an honors college. And uh, we did study governments in that. Uh, we don't want to live under a tyranny. No. Because that's that's one or two people or a small group deciding uh, what we will what will happen to us. Well, we want to get it back to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. yes. And we, we want to bring everybody up, and we want everyone involved. And uh, we want this to truly be a, a government of the people. Yes. Yes. Caring about their fellow man. Of the people, by the people, and right, for the people. Right. And not just for special interests. Right, right. Not self serving politicians, yeah. but public servants. Yes. That's, that's what we need not to do. Not self serving politicians, but the public servants. That's what we need to get it back to. Yeah. That's that, that's what come on, you guys. Let, let's go ahead and run for office. We need yeah. to we need uh, we need you. Yes. We need some good people out there. And uh, I would always Anyone who is a good person wants to run for office and really has a heart for it, I would help them. I mean, I would tell them how to do it. It's not that hard. You know, you just have, have to have the heart for it and uh, the determination, the zeal. God always spoke in the Bible about zeal and boldness, you know. Yes. And we need to have that zeal and boldness. Bold. Boldness. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be bold. Yeah. If we're not bold, we're going to get trampled. You know, and, and, you know, years ago, they started this political correctness. Okay. And, and, and what my view is on political correctness, it's political cowardice. Political cowardice. Political correctness is political cowardice because when something is wrong, if you are an elected official, 
not just so you can rub shoulders with certain folks, but you need to speak out. That's Even right. if you're going to ruffle feathers, you got, you've got a job. When we took that oath, that was one of the most sacred things when I took that oath of office. Yes. And uh, I felt like I stood there with George Washington and all those that went before me. And how they can take that oath, and especially those folks in Washington and the swamp, as they call it. Yeah. How they can do what they do. I, I mean, I would hate to be them when they meet the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> very important. How long have you been in public service? I, I tried for uh, several years. Uh, I was a executive officer of the UAW. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just a regular line worker. And... Uh, the people elected me. Then I'd worked on a lot of appointed positions for the township for both Democratic and uh, Republican administrations. Mm -hmm. And I guess I must be doing something right because they still wanted me on there, you know. Yeah. And uh, but um, no, I've been active for a long, long time. And uh, it was one of the greatest honors. And this was during COVID that I won this election. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but no, it's been a blessing to me. Yeah, you know, it's been an honor. It's been a true honor. So, yeah, when you, you go spend time at home and, and and rest, you know that you've done all you could do. That's right to help the people. That's right, and um, that's how our government was started many years ago. How it was started, uh, representative government. Right. Yeah, and it's important. It's important. Um, so you'll help anyone that wants to run for office. Yeah, I mean, I would give them pointers. And, okay. uh, again, you know, it's it's not that difficult. You know, you, you keep a certain amount of issues so people uh, don't get confused. I mean, there's a short attention span. When you give somebody, you don't want to have the Magna Carta. Yeah. But you want to have but, but issues that you really believe in. Yeah. Be real. People respect real. And, and they, they, they don't want somebody that's just scratching their itch in your they want somebody that's going to do the job. Do the job. That's what we need. That's the kind of people we need. Want to be a leader than a follower. That's right. There you go. That's right. There you go. So, um, you know, Bill will help you. And if you decide to run for public office, um, you know, and and be able to have the voice of the people represent those that, that live around you. You know, it says that um, uh, people will move next to you for safety. Mm-hmm. And, and that's important. That's why we we have um, local government. That's right. Local government. And it's very important. Um, thank you for this, this statement. Um, wow. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. And uh, you took it from somebody that cared about the people. That was James Madison. Yes, he did. He cared about the people. And um, he... Um, he believed in representative government and republic. Do you know right now we don't have a republic? We have a corporation. Yeah. And a, and a corporation. See, the republic is goes to the representation of the people. But a corporation is beholden only to the shareholders, which are the elite right now. And they control everything. That's why they get these things passed. Um, like this, what you're talking about, this fact sheet. Um, it's important. It's important to understand that. It's important to understand that. So, um, thank you for coming. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very appreciate much. it. And, and keep us informed as what's happening. Oh, absolutely. And uh, this is just one bad. I, I mean, I, I've heard whispers of other things they want to do. That's why this is just the first wave of they, what they want to do. I mean, they want to go after uh, people septic. Uh, fields and things like this and recycle the water. And I don't think people want to be drinking recycled water. No. And I mean, it's very extreme. It, it, it's like what you will find is the, the truth is not the far left or the far right, but the sensible middle where most people are. Yeah. And, and you know, we need to meet people there. Meet people where they are. That's right. Yeah. That's important. Well, okay. Um, thank you for coming in and thank you for sharing what you're doing, and uh, you have a life of public service. That's what you've lived. And um, I, I, I respect, you know, when you come to different meetings like the uh, the Flint Encounter Group, mm -hmm. uh, which is headed up by um, Brother Larry mm -hmm. and Janine uh, Cool, and that was started, uh, they're starting their ninth year. Wow. Yeah. 
and it was a dream of theirs about bringing the churches together and they bring different individuals every Thursday from 12 until two. Uh, and that is at the golden corral on Miller road. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's something that if you want to get involved, you can go there. Right. And, uh, and you'll see individuals like, like Bill Bain here, that's a, a trustee. And, uh, it's, it's a good way to get your voice heard, mm -hmm. get your voice heard. And uh, that's just in our backyard. And there's other meetings, other places, too. So And it's good fellowship. Too. Yes, it is good fellowship. And uh, it's always good to fellowship around food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I respect you. Know, you you bring things to them, you know, you and, and you're based on the Bible. You're based on the Bible. You're, you're a great Bible background. Um, and, and you care about people. Um, and it's important because you can't be in public service without caring about people unless you're only, what is it? Special interest. You care about yourself, right? So self, self, self serving, serving. And, uh, that's not really beneficial, no. not really beneficial. Um, and the more people that you have as your base, mm -hmm. the stronger your position will be. That's right. You know? Yeah. So, well, thank you. And um, a couple of other things uh, that, that I do. Uh, tonight, we have a Bible study and uh, at the Flint Public Library, which is a very high-tech library. And if you go to, uh, it's a phone Bible study uh, that you dial 1, and that's our country code, 1-701-802-5180. That's 701-802-5180 with a 1. And uh, then when requested, put the access code of 6344132-pound. That's 6344132-pound. And we're talking about your identity in Christ and how God sees you. Uh, that's an interesting topic. Also, on Saturday, um, I do a radio program on WSNL Christian Talk Radio. And thanks to... Uh, uh, All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church. Uh, Steve Myers is putting our radio programs and John, John Wilson on Rumble. And if you go to Rumble and you get your subscription and you put 15 minutes to a greater understanding, you'll be able to listen to our radio programs that we've had over the last, uh, well, I check, we started March of 2019. Wow. And every Saturday, I guess, I guess except for two, um, there is a, a teaching, a program. Well, this Saturday, coming up the 18th, uh, we're going to talk about what problems in our so-called modern life today, what problems, and it's basically technology. <laughs> technology is a distraction from God, and we're going to talk about six ingredients that will help you to fast from technology. Um, and um, if you want to go, you can go to your smartphone. Uh, there's 5 billion of you out there that have a smartphone, either an iPhone or uh, an Android. And you can go to WSNL Christian Talk um, Radio and get that link and share that link with your family, with your friends, and also your enemies. And you say, well, why your enemies? Reverend Lord said, I'll see if it was City's Hope Ministry. Well, your enemies, they just one day become your brother or sister in Christ. We have an adversary, an enemy, and he creates all kinds of havoc. Uh, these problems were all backed by him, right. you know, in his cohorts. And uh, because he doesn't want us to have representation, but God does. God wants us That's to have right. representation, and it's important. Um, also, uh, next week, we are going to talk about... Um, on the May 21st, okay, um, we're going to talk about verses on God's love in the Bible. You know, uh, did you know that God, who created the universe, the most powerful being ever, loves you personally? <laughs> we're going to talk about that next week here on um, All Points TV, Omni Orbis Church, yeah, called A Greater Understanding, Genesee. Well, um, we always give everyone the only opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, uh, in every program. And that's probably the most important part, other than the knowledge that you've given us today about representation, local government. 
Um, we give everyone the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ if they choose to do that. On our program, we have Muslims, we have uh, Baha'i, we have Buddhists, uh, we have atheists, we even have uh, agnostics who don't believe in anything, <laughs> and uh, uh, Druze, which is my family, um, is Druze or Mohadin, uh, which um, there's about a million of us in the, in the world. Uh, back in the 11th century, they closed the converts, and you had to be born Druze in order to be one of us. Um, and it comes down from Jethro. And Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses and the father of Zipporah. And Jethro, which was the prince of Midian, uh, in the middle of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, taught Moses how to be a uh, shepherd mm. and how to delegate. And that was important because he was going to take care of 3 million people mm -hmm. in the wilderness for 40 years. Yeah. And uh, Pharaoh taught him how to be a, a ruler. And Jethro taught him how to be a, a shepherd and uh, delegation. And then he spent 40 years, <laughs> the last 40 years of his life in the wilderness before uh, they attempted to go to the promised land. Um until Joshua, and Joshua took them into the promised land. And they were just like six days from when they left Egypt in bondage to go to the promised land. It's amazing. Um, we find out that our, how would you say, our promised land is wherever you want and God puts in your heart. You know, uh, but we'll, if, if you do decide uh, to be a follower of Jesus Christ and um, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which uh, some of us should know, he, he did what? He was born of a virgin. Mm -hmm. um, he led a sinless life for 30 years. And then um, the last three and a half years of his life, he had 12 individuals, uh, which was his inner group of disciples, and uh, had many other disciples that were taught and walked the earth and taught the morality of God the Father. And um, he did what? He led a sinless life. He died on a cross for our sins. Um, and, um, you know, he was without sin, became sin for us. And then he was buried, uh, rose on the third day, and um, then led captivity captive when he was in the bowels of hell. And um, shed his blood for us and presented his blood to the Father on the mercy seat in heaven. And he's sitting right now at the right hand of the Father testifying for us. And he's alive. Mm -hmm. He's alive. He conquered uh, the kingdom of sin. Uh, we have not conquered death yet, but uh, uh, our bodies, okay, have not been redeemed but our soul has been redeemed uh -huh. for the day of redemption. And um, we, we have three parts. We uh, live in a body, uh -huh. which is our tent. We have a soul uh -huh. and uh, also a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. Uh -huh. And we're hundred percent spirit. Uh -huh. And that spirit uh, is dead until we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and savior. So uh, those of you that wish to receive Jesus Christ, could you help me, Bill? Sure. Okay. Uh, bow your heads. Close your eyes and repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose upon the third day. And because I believe it. And because I believe it. I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, and all, amen. Oops, sorry. All God's children said. And all God's children said. Amen and amen. <laughs> amen and amen. And if you said that, uh, understand that salvation uh, deals with repentance first. And then it is not a formula. You know, it's, it's good to be water baptized. It's good to recite the sinner's prayer, but it is a heart issue is what repentance is. And we work out our repentance uh, daily. 
Yeah, we carry our cross. But um, uh, those of you who said that for the first time, you can get a hold of me, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. And uh, you can call me at 1-513-512-3200. Or you can email me at Cities of Hope hope ministries at gmail.com and get me your name and your address and i will send you a bible personally wherever you are in the world and uh, uh that's if you recited that sinner's prayer and meant it in your heart and not just just reciting words because it's not words and if you listen to every one of those words that were said it is all about the creator of the universe, becoming the creation to save the creation. And I um, want to thank you very much for attending another program of Greater Understanding. And you have the opportunity to come to the Bible study uh, tonight uh, by phone, anywhere you are in the world. And uh, also to go to, and that's every Tuesday from 530 to 7, and also to go to WSNL Christian Talk Radio uh, every Saturday at noon to 1215. There are 15 minute spots. And uh, also you can go to Rumble. Go to Rumble and put 15 minutes to a greater understanding. And you'll see our radio programs that have happened ever since March of 2019. Well, thank you very much, and uh, keep us informed, Bill. Oh, yeah. And we'd like to have you back again yeah, one day. Absolutely. God All right. Bless you. Thank you. God bless you, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time.